Hey y'all, well guess what? I'm finally in my new location. Um, it's across the hall. <laughs> but uh, you'll see from, if you ever go over to my Beth Buchanan Bible Beauty Fashion and Fun, I also did my first uh, video filming that kind of uh, content uh, on my other channel. I will put a link to that below if you're interested in that kind of thing. Um, but anyway, it's, it's kind of just more fun, but I don't want people to think that it's not fun being a Christian. Here on Beth Buchanan Pure Bible, we look at Bible study, we look at daily devotions, um, prayer time, and just, you know, sharing the Word of God together. Uh, I want to apologize that it has been taking so long, and today what I want to cover is not where we were on a walk through the Bible. We had only gotten to Exodus, and I think it's because I'm going so detailed, which is okay, because most of them are just top line that you see. Um, so I'm stopping along the way. Right now, we had stopped on the tabernacle and what all the things inside the tabernacle actually mean. And because I'm not a Bible scholar, but I do study in advance to try to be able to um, bring something to you besides just you reading it uh, but it's very important that you read it and you pray and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you in case I ever say something that's not totally uh, correct I mean I'm fallible I'm human and you know what if I get it wrong so you should always um, just like who was it the Bereans um, who always questioned and, and sought God on everything that they were told and you should always do that because uh, sometimes teachers can be wrong. Sometimes teachers are deliberately wrong. And I hate that, but it, it does happen. Um, but anyway, um, so that's where we are. So I want to have your input on whether or not you want to continue a walk through the Bible. Or should we, since we're towards the end of the year, start over and make it more of a devotion style walk through the Bible. What is your preference? If you want me to keep going on a detailed level... And we just finish when we finish. It may be a year. It may be just depending on how the Holy Spirit leads me to teach it or share it, I should say. Um, you know, there may be sections that we kind of not gloss over in any way, but don't get to so much detail, like going through maybe Leviticus or Numbers. I'm not sure yet. Um, but just tell me if you want that. If you want that to continue, I'll continue. Or if it's not of interest to you, and I really need y'all to comment below on this because... Um, if, if, if even one person wants it, I'll do it. But also, um, I do think it's important. There's so many times that I come across good teachings, and I want to share it. And I think, no, that's not what we're doing right now. So today, that's what I'm doing. And I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet, and I'm going to tell you where it came from. Uh, we were asked to do um, um, praise and worship to lead it at our old church. Uh, the pastor was uh, going to visit a pastor friend of ours in another country. And um, so he left and took one of the uh, lead teachers there with him, but he left his wife and the lead teacher's wife behind. So they were like, we can handle doing the teaching, but we do need someone to lead praise and worship, if you could please do that. So we, you know, it's always yes, Lord, right? So um, don't tell me I just lost that. My thumb hit it. There it is, okay. All right. Um, so the teaching was so good that um, I took notes, and afterwards I said, I'm going to play plagiarize you, and I'm going to share this as a daily devotional, or just a devotional, um, with my YouTube channel. So, first of all, let's pray. Um, God, we come to you because you are holy, you are the only God there is, and... Um, we need you. We need you, really and truly, God. We need you to bless this so that we can hear from you, not from me. Lord, help me to um, not just regurgitate what I learned or, or heard, but that you would give us a special blessing and meaning um, to this, this time together to um, share your word. And it's because we love you. We don't want to just have knowledge to have it. We want to know you better. And we know that one of the ways to do that is through your word. So we're thankful for your word. Uh, Holy Spirit, we ask you to use me and to go into the people's ears 
as well so that we hear from you as we look over uh, these points and into your scripture. In Jesus' name, I also lift up everyone who's watching for any prayer requests that they're going to put below, or whether they speak them below in comments or if they don't. Lord, that you would bless them, that they would know that you hear their prayers and that you care about them deeply. And that you are all powerful, but that you are, you have a plan and we're okay with fitting into your plan, Lord, because you're our God. And we ask all of these things in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, um, your Son, who is also God. It's in his name that we come to you and ask for this. Amen. Okay, so I am going to cook through this because I don't want it to turn into two videos. If it does, I'll just label it part one and two. I am going to be trying to get a new camera because my husband told me it is a camera issue. It has something to do with how they tax video versus, like, film. I, anyway, I don't know. But I think there's new ones now that it doesn't do that. And you don't have to go through hours and hours of editing because I don't have that kind of time. Uh, when I retire, I may do long-form video where I edit, but at this point in my life, I do live. So, all right, so um, I'd love for you to go to Matthew 24, um, and we're going to be looking at verses 4 through 14. And what I'm going to do is give you, oh, seven points, and I want you to go and reread that section yourself and see where each one of these things comes up. So first and foremost, um, I'm going to read it, and I'm using the um, U version, or it says Holy Bible app. It's a little brown Bible. So we're going to hit the, the word Bible, and it goes to the actual Bible, and then you uh, click on the book at the top, and you can spin up to where you want to be. And we're going to Matthew chapter 24, and then we're going to look at, um, did I say that right? Hold on. Oh, yeah. Matthew 24, verses 4 through 14. Okay, I started with 1, so let me get down to 4. Okay, I'm just going to read it. If you want to put me on pause and get out your notebook, your Bible, or if you just want to sit and listen and do that later, it's totally up to you. Um, but I do ask that besides me reading it, you get out your Bible and you go read it, whether it's electronic or physical. I love it when I'm not on film and I'm not having to worry about time. I know this is what pastors have to do too nowadays. Is You know, we used to all carry our Bibles to church and a lot of people do electronic now because it's easier, quicker to get to it than flipping through pages. And it saves time so that more uh, time can be for worship and uh, teaching and sharing and uh, sharing community things, announcements, things like that for involvement. And so, unless you're really good and fast at flipping, and, and you can be so busy flipping you're not listening, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So it's important to listen to the Word as much as it is to read the Word. Um, so, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do this again. You can pause it and then go get your things or you can come back to this later with your Bible and listen again. Okay. Starting with verse 4, Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. This is a message to you and me. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of the birth pangs. Then, verse 9, you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. And that time, many will turn away from the faith and betray and hate each other and many false prof prophets will appear and deceive many people because of the increase of wickedness the love of most will grow cold but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the whole world as a testimony to nation to all nations and then the end will come now, a 
it's no coincidence with all the things that are the world events that are going on today, in particularly with with Israel. And regardless of what you're hearing, first of all, always be aware that the news is a source for propaganda. Either way, whether you, whether it's Israel or Hamas or Hezbollah or what's called Jewish, Christian, Islamic, um, as Christians, regardless of whether I agree with what I'm hearing, and it may or may not be the truth, it may or may not be old films, it may or may not be reported correctly, but regardless of whether Israel is right or wrong, as a Christian, I'm called to be on their side. I know people go, well, what about the Palestinians? First of all, and I don't want to get too political, but I do want you to understand it has never been a, a Palestinian state. Um, Prime Minister Netanyahu, I know of five times because I watched him on the UN, but five different times he's offered to make it a Palestinian state. They didn't want that. They wanted to completely take it over and eradicate all Jews, not just from that area, but from the planet. And they've stated it several times. I'm not telling you something you don't know. This is is um, the Islamic extremist um, movement. And that's what these, um, what we call terrorist groups come from. Um, and to follow that as a people means you're a part of that. And as brutal as that sounds, it is what it is. That is what it is. It has never been a Palestinian state. Before, if you do your history, it was uh, British, and I think before that, it was Ottoman. And initially, we know from the Bible that God gave that land to the Jews. He gave, with Ishmael, he gave a different nation, a different part of land to him. But he gave to Isaac, or, is, or the nation of Israel, he gave the promised land. And even though they had been willing to give up part of it, um, to, for the sake of peace or for the sake of saying, okay, have yourself a state. It's just not worked out because peace isn't what they want. So, um, and really neither is the land. They want to get rid of the Jewish people. So, um, and I hate that. But I don't hate them. Even the actual terrorists, I don't hate them because the Bible tells us to pray for, um, to love our enemies.